Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son did manifest himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread, Open, we pray thee, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him and all his redeeming work, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we will re recite a portion of Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because, because he has inclined his ear to me, whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord 
is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. A reading from First Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of our women in our group astounded us. They went to the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? 
That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As most members of both of our congregations know, neither Father Kevin nor myself were raised as Episcopalians or Anglicans. We both grew up in Baptist churches. As for me, and I think the same as for Father Kevin, we both come from a very long line of Baptists. Throughout my ministry, I have been asked time and time again, what brought me to the Episcopal Church? What brought me to Anglicanism? I think many people have expected me to say something about our position on certain social issues, and it always surprises people that it is nothing that the Church has to say about politics that brought me from being a Baptist to being an Episcopalian. You see, in my sophomore year of high school, a friend of mine, who was an Episcopalian, still is, invited me to a weekend retreat at her church. Now, I don't even think I knew what an Episcopalian was at that time when she asked me to go, but whenever she would go on these retreats, she always spoke so highly of it, so I took her up on her offer. Now, those of you who know of or have been part of the Curcio movement, you will understand the nature of this particular retreat. This weekend, which we called an Emmaus weekend, is based on the adult Curcio, with much of the spiritual formation parts taken directly from that adult program. It was a life-changing experience for me, as I found myself transformed by the powerful Christian witness of the leaders, my fellow participants, and the program as a whole. It was the turning point in my life of faith. I instantly wanted more and became a part of the leadership team of the twice yearly weekends until I graduated high school three years later. But perhaps the most important moment on that first weekend I went on was my first taste of liturgical worship from the Book of Common Prayer. It was participation in that service of Holy Eucharist that changed the direction of my life forever. You see, in my childhood church, we did not have or even understand the Holy Eucharist the way that Anglicans do. I mean, once a month, after the pastor would we read a scripture and say a prayer, a platter of broken matzo crackers would be passed around the congregation, followed by little tiny shots of grape juice. We called it the Lord's Supper, or remembering the Lord's Supper. And clearly, it was meant to be a memorial of what happened the night that Jesus instituted the Last Supper, a remembrance. But the theology of communion from my childhood church is not as we Anglicans understand it. We understand it as a miracle in which the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So I will never forget the first time, on my first Emmaus weekend, I watched the priest celebrate the Holy Eucharist, listened to the powerful words of the prayers, and received Christ's body and blood for the first time. It changed me. It changed who I was. It changed my relationship with Jesus Christ. In an instant, communion was no longer a quick ceremony done once a month that meant pretty much nothing to me, but something that became integral to my life, an act that I relied on for the strength to do God's work in this world, even while knowing I was not worthy for the gift that I received in the sacrament. It was that first taste of the sacrament. It was that act of receiving bread and wine 
that had been transformed into the body and blood of our Lord, which changed my life forever. And though I did not know it then, it propelled me into a life of service to God and His church for the rest of my life. The Holy Eucharist is at the center of all we do as Christians. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are changed, we are transformed into new beings, into a new creation in Jesus Christ. But it is in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. It is in receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we are unified with God and one another and given the spiritual nourishment to live lives as Jesus Christ would have us live. The Eucharist gives us our strength. It gives us our courage. It is a reminder to us that the Holy Spirit can take the simplest of things and transform them into something completely holy. Because if simple bread and wine can become the body and blood of our Lord, what can't the Holy Spirit do? Two of Jesus' followers headed out towards a village called Emmaus on the same morning that Jesus had risen from the dead. It was not a village very far from Jerusalem, about seven miles, when the risen Lord appeared to them. And when he appeared to them, they, like Mary Magdalene in the garden, did not recognize him. Not knowing who this man was, they engaged him in conversation about the events leading up to the death of Jesus and telling the supposed stranger that the tomb where they had laid Christ was found empty by the women that morning. Knowing that they did not recognize him, Jesus begins to teach. Just as Jesus does in every situation, he teaches and when they reach Emmaus, they invite him to dinner. And the very moment that Jesus blessed and broke the bread, they recognized him. They knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And when they realized what had happened, they too went out and declared that they had seen the risen Lord. This story is undoubtedly, at least to me, a story about the power of the Holy Eucharist. You see, Jesus has a way of coming to us in the world when we don't realize it, often blind to the presence of the resurrected Lord right in front of our eyes. But it is in the Holy Eucharist, it is in the breaking of the bread, that we see our Lord Jesus Christ most clearly. It is in this holy act, this holy act in which simple things become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, where bread is broken and shared, that we see Jesus literally right in front of us. It is in this act that we can literally hold the body of our Lord in our hands and physically unite with him. It is a miracle. It is a miracle that is beyond our comprehension. Our current crisis has brought us challenges we never thought we would ever have to face. And one of those challenges is how do we as the church worship and share the sacrament of Christ's body and blood when physical distancing is essential for our protection and safety? If you have been watching these weekly Masses that Father Kevin and I have been recording for you, you will notice that we are providing a prayer so that those of you at home can receive communion spiritually because you cannot receive it physically. And make no mistake, the act of spiritual communion is as beneficial to our souls as physically receiving the sacrament. And I also know, I know from her first-hand experience, that the experience is not the same. 
when I became ill in 2018, I had to go an entire six-month period without receiving the body and blood of our Lord. I remember the deep longing to commune with God and with each other. And so I understand what many of you might be feeling today. The desire to physically receive the body and blood of our Lord is deep and it is real. And we can feel a void in our souls when that period of anticipation to receive the sacrament is prolonged far longer than we would wish. In many ways, I imagine that's almost how the two disciples on the road to Emmaus felt. They longed to see their risen Lord. They were grieving and mourning and confused. And even when they met Jesus on the road, they still had a very hard time recognizing him. And it was not until our Lord broke bread that they saw the fullness of the resurrection in front of their eyes. My brothers and sisters, pay attention to the longing that you feel for the sacrament during this exile. Pay attention to your desire to commune with the body and blood of our Lord. Hold on to what you are feeling. For it is in that longing and deep desire that Christ will meet us and teach us and sustain us. It is in that longing and deep desire that Christ invites us into deeper relationship with him. A relationship based in perfect trust, grace, and love. A relationship that sustains us even in the depths of our despair. You will remember, I'm sure, that that weekend retreat I spoke about early on, that weekend retreat that transformed my life was called Emmaus. And yes, it was named for the village in today's gospel story when, where the disciples met their Lord in the breaking of the bread, resurrected and whole. All of us have journeyed on the road to Emmaus and have met the risen Lord on the way. Because the road to Emmaus is our life. Now, the road to Emmaus was absolutely 100% a historical event. And still, it is ongoing. We are all on the road to Emmaus right now. Longing for relief. Longing for an end to our grief and despair. Longing to meet our risen Lord. As is often said about the road to Emmaus, it happened and it is happening. Too often our blindness keeps us from seeing the resurrected Lord in the ordinary, standing right in front of us, ready to reveal the glory of the resurrection to us and to the world. And I can assure you, sisters and brothers, that through this time of crisis, the risen Lord has been making his presence known throughout the world. But still we remember that it is in the breaking of the bread, the Holy Eucharist, that our eyes are fully opened and the glory of the Lord shines before us in the bread and wine transformed for us into the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, right now we have to wait on the road to Emmaus a little longer before we can gather to break that precious bread in person. But as we wait, know that the risen Lord is indeed traveling on the road with us, that he is caring for us, comforting us, and loving us, even when we don't recognize that he is there. Though today the road to Emmaus may seem longer and more dangerous than in times past, there is no question that in the end we will reach our destination and look upon the fullness of our risen Lord in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Lawrence, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Andrew, our governor, and the Congress and Supreme Court, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, 
we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to uh, see all of you um, on this, the third Sunday of. Easter. Uh, it is so wonderful, again, that our tradition reminds us that Easter is a full 50 days and uh, not just one morning. And in that we celebrate. We celebrate Christ's resurrection for an entire 50 days. At 11 o'clock this morning, we will be gathering for a virtual coffee hour. Um, I have sent the uh, Zoom address or dial-in number uh, with the email containing um, this video, so please feel free to join us. Um, as, as most of you uh, have heard by now, uh, Monday afternoon, um, our parishioner Charles Thorpe uh, died as a result of complications uh, of, of COVID-19 and our prayers are with his wife Dorothy and their children and grandchildren as they grieve. Charles has been cremated. Uh, we will have a memorial service for him um, when it is safe to do so and he will be interred in the columbarium at the church. So we do continue to pray for the repose of his soul and again remember his family in your prayers at this time. Over the next week or so, I will be sending out more information about some classes that we are going to be offering uh, to you uh, during this, our extended exile, which unfortunately does not look like it will end until June, and even in June, probably a very limited basis, but we will, we will um, talk about that when the time comes. Again, I miss all of you, and I thank you for all your love, support, and prayers during this time. Please know that you are in my constant prayers and I hope that you stay safe. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, and be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church 
they obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of Thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink His blood, that we may evermore dwell in Him, and He in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate and the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, 
that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, hast been pleased to give joy to the whole world, grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, we may attain the joys of eternal life. Through the same Christ our Lord, Oh, uh-huh.